Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 970 Pro Gaming Aura from Asus. So first, full disclosure, uh, this motherboard was sent to me by Asus. I did not pay for it, and I get to keep this motherboard. So yeah, take that how you will, but this motherboard is now mine. Uh, so, let's just take a quick look around it before, uh, in preparation for Saturday's stream. So, let's start off with all the basic stuff. Here's your I.O. Uh, these red ports are USB 3.1, uh, and the LAN port is an Intel NIC. So, you know, that, that's all you need to know there. Down here you have the Supreme FX audio, and I'm 99% sure that that's an ALC 1150 under that, but... You know, if you want to check, then Google is your friend. Down here, you can find the front panel audio, COM port, trusted platform, USB ports, and over here, we start getting the first of the interesting things. So this is clear real-time clock. This jumper here, so that'll reset your BIOS state and time as well as all your BIOS settings because that's how that works. Uh, next to that, you get the OCJ, so that's your over, that's a little overclock connector. Uh, basically, it gives you a pinout for safe boot, retry, and slow mode. So safe boot is basically if, say, you screw up your BIOS and the motherboard won't post. So you press the safe boot button, it sets all, your bi uh, it sets all of the motherboard settings back to default. So it'll start default CPU speed, default RAM speed. Uh, so it'll start up. However, it'll retain all of your BIOS settings. So whatever, you know, dodgy memory timings you put in or whatever, those are going to still be there after you press the safe boot button. So that's super useful, except it's not a button here. So you're going to have to, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire in some extra buttons onto this board so that I can uh, do everything quickly because shorting pins out is a massive pain. Uh, there's also the retry, uh, retry functionality. Uh, what retry does is it basically quickly resets the motherboard uh, and forces it to try again. Very useful if you're testing, uh, trying to get some very hard, uh, trying to get some very difficult memory settings to boot up. So, you know, it fails to post once. You can retry, and it'll retry. Press the just basically. Well, we don't have a button. Short the retry pins a few times, and eventually, if you're lucky, it'll it'll might be able to actually get all of your memory. Uh, it might be able to post after a few retries. So that's why that's there. Uh, and slow mode, slow mode basically just drops your CPU clocks to the minimum possible clock speed, basically on demand. You short it out, CPU clocks fall off a cliff. Very useful if you're trying to boot up Windows or you've just finished some kind of test. Um, mostly I would say this is very more useful for cold bug uh, CPUs because I've personally never had a, like, I've never needed slow mode on an AMD motherboard so far. Uh, so, yeah, but it's there if you need it, so you can use it if you want. Uh, next to that, you get a chassis fan header uh, and all of your front panel connectors. And again, there's no power button on this board, no reset button on this board. So if you want to use this as a benching board, you're going to have to get, you know, wired, get some kind of uh, wires and buttons and basically hook those up uh, so that it's convenient to use. Uh, over here we have a little LED that'll turn on if you have the 24 pin plugged in and the power supply turned on because that'll basically that's hooked up to the 5 volt standby power uh, which is the uh, which is a basically a rail that the PSU puts out when it's uh, in standby which means uh, AC power goes in but you don't get 12 volts 5 volts and all that you just get standby power uh, so that covers that there is an M.2 socket well slot don't know what the hell you call this M.2 thing right there. If you care about M.2, you can you know use that. I personally don't have any M.2 devices. I don't have any interest in M.2 because I feel like SATA SSDs are still fast enough for me. So I'm not going to be covering that in any more detail ever uh, in the future. Above that, we find a single socketed BIOS chip. Uh, this board does not offer dual BIOS. Uh, so if you screw up a BIOS flash, uh, yeah, the board's going to be bricked. However, since this is a socketed chi uh, BIOS chip, you can get a replacement BIOS chip. And I do believe you need to pay for the replacement BIOS chip, but you can get one. So it's not like the whole board is completely screwed if you mess up a BIOS flash. But I would still recommend you don't do that because you're going to be without a board for several days and it's probably going to cost you. 
Next to that, we get your six, say to six, uh, six gigs, per, uh, six gigabit per second ports uh, from the 970 chipset on this motherboard. So that's normal for this uh, chipset. So then you get another chassis fan header, USB 3.0 header, 24 pin power, single memory, uh, single phase memory VRM right here. So you can see the choke for that and you have four MOSFETs. Wait, let me, this is so awkward. I'm just not used to having working with cameras. So these four MOSFETs right here, that is your, I do believe that's the, let me check. Yeah, so those, so that's your high side right there and your low side is from the other. So these are low, eh, whatever. Either way, these are four C09s and they're rated for 39 amps at, uh, 39 amps continuous at 80 degrees case temperature. Here they don't have a heat sink, so I'm gonna go with the 25 degree ambient rating since that's the one meant for non-heat sink situations. And again, continuous drain current is a ridiculous measurement for a high side MOSFET. So with a, tw a 25 degree ambient temperature, you can expect these to handle 25 amps continuous. Uh, so that basically means, yeah, you have plenty of memory power. DDR3 does not run on any anywhere near enough power to actually put this VRM in any, uh, under any strenuous load. So that's that. So let's keep moving on around the board. You get three more CPU fan, well, no, you get three more fan headers right here. These are for the CPU, and one of them is a water pump header. It'll still work as a fan header, so it says water pump. And basically, uh, I have no <laughs> idea why it's labeled water pump. I think it's to supply more power or it's slightly differently managed in terms of fan speed. Next, to the, then you finally get your 8-pin power connector in the, you know, the place where you can never get a cable to reach. Like, I've never managed to, inst like, I've built a few systems in actual cases, and, yeah, believe it. Uh, and I've never managed to get this cable to go, you know, around the, around the back and into that port, because the cable's never been lo that long. So, but yeah, that's standard layout, so no surprises there. And one last thing before we get onto the interesting part of this board, there's another fan header right here, which I think is meant for your exhaust fan in a case right there. That would usually go right there. So, the interesting part, the VRM. This is a very, very unique VRM for an AM3 Plus motherboard. This is a 7 Plus 1. So, if we take it from this angle, you can see there are eight chokes uh, seven of those are for your V-Core, one of them is for your Northbridge uh, voltage. So that's the Northbridge built into the CPU. It gets its power from this choke right over there. The remaining seven feed the CPU calculation logic and the cores and L3 and all of that. So, seven phases. Well, it's not doubled up because you can't double up, uh, you can't have three and a half uh, PWM signals to double up. So this is true seven, uh, true seven phases. Uh, however, Asus has cut down on the amount of capacitors that you would have compared to other AM3 Plus boards. The, there's only six uh, 560 microfarad capacitors on here. That's, say, compared to the Gigabyte, that's half of what the Gigabyte has. However, Asus can get away with this because they do have seven true phases. So the voltage controller has much better control over the power going through each phase, so you basically don't need as big a capacitor bank to compensate for any irregularities in current demand, because that's usually what you have a large capacitor bank to soak up any uh, big spikes from, you know, the CPU suddenly changes power demands, and if you lose too much power from the actual phases, then the capacitor bank is there to basically keep the voltage uh, steady. With a true seven phase design, you don't really need such a big capacitor bank, so uh, the cut down capacitor bank makes sense. The other thing is lo less capacitors gets you more efficiency because big passive components all just burn power uh, to get you better power quality, but you know you lose efficiency. So this VRM, I want to do a comparison on efficiency between this VRM and the Gigabyte board. So try figure out how to do that, but that's probably gonna be really hard because I'll have to match them for voltage and everything and I don't know if I'll actually be able to do that. Uh, other than that, so yeah, you got seven phases, so 
that's fine. The north bridge has two capacitors, uh, that's fine as well. All of the capacitors on the board are, as you can tell, black, so they're all special and black edition and whatever. Basically, it just means they have 5,000 hours uh, endurance ratings, so they'll last longer than your standard 2,500 hour capacitors. So basically, if you wanted to use this board in a really high temperature environment for a really, really long time, these capacitors will you know, la survive better than other capacitors. So that's what that means. Let's take a look at the actual power capabilities. So I'm not going to pull off the heatsink on in this video because the board uses push, push pins. See? Oh, screws. Those are push pins. Push pins are a pain to remove. And then, well, they're easy enough to install back in. But it does use push pins, so I can't pull it off right now. And these MOSFETs, so you actually get some MOSFETs on the back. These are your low side fats. These are 4C06s from on semiconductor. And those are rated for 52 amps continuous drain current at 80 degrees. Uh, and this is only one of the low side fats. There's another low side fat under the actual heat sink. So basically the, the low side on this VRM is doubled up. So, you know, you have plenty of current available, uh, almost 100 amps continuous, assuming that you can actually keep the VRM at 80 degrees. If you let the VRM get a little too hot, you're going to derate down to around 70 amps uh, total low side current capability. So that means each of these will, each of the low side MOSFETs will basically be able to do 35 amps. With two of them in there, you'll get 70 amps per phase. With seven phases, that is still 490 amps. So the low side is definitely powerful enough for anything you could ever want to power. That leaves the question of, will the high side survive it? And that is a little bit more questionable. So there's a single high side MOSFET in this VRM per phase. And each of those is a 4C not, 4C09, also from on semiconductor. And those are rated for 39 amps at 80 degrees, and that's continuous again. So at 80 degrees, you can expect this VRM to do over 300 amps relatively easily. If the VRM gets really, really hot, it's going to derate hard. It, going from 80 degrees to, say, 110 degrees, you're going to lose half your power rating. Then you're going to have a problem. I suspect that's why ASUS does not, uh, does not list this motherboard as compatible with the 9000 series FX CPUs. Because the 9000 series runs really, really hot. And if, you know, most normal people don't worry about VRM temperature. So if you put a 9000 series in this and, you, you know, if some, and you didn't, care about VRM temperatures and you had a case and you had bad airflow and the VRM did actually hit into the hundreds, you'd probably blow out the high sides on this. So capable VRM if you cool it, but watch those temperatures. If this gets too hot, then you're going to have a problem, but that goes pretty much without saying for any VRM ever, except the ones where they go super, super overkill on them and the VRM ends up costing almost as much as the entire motherboard. Uh, there are a few motherboards where that's actually like like, Gigabyte has one motherboard with 32 phases. And that's where you just go, that's where even I say, no, that, 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 that's just silly. Okay, don't do that. Um, so, yeah, but this VRM, you know, for the fact that this is a 970 chipset board, and the fact that it is relatively affordable, and it's not an ROG board, I'm really happy with that VRM. Very, very, very capable. If you keep it cool, it's going to power pretty much anything you could throw at this board. Uh, if you don't keep it cool, it'll power everything it's certified to power. So, you know, meets expectations at the very least. Um, what else is there to say? I'm pleasantly surprised by this board, to be completely honest with you. Uh, and I actually really like it um, in terms of the hardware I've seen. I am kind of worried that Asus have forgot to include the bio, uh, core unlocking options for Phenom CPUs in the BIOS. However, this board does actually have more OC features. <laughs> like, admittedly, they're implemented in headers instead of buttons, but it does offer more OC features than almost any other 970 board on the market. And I got more good news. This VRM is capable. The BIOS allows you to do two volts on the V-Core. Well, 2.075. So, 
this could very, very well be a great, great, great motherboard for, you know, LN2 benchmarking with FX CPUs. I'm not going to say it's good for Phenom 2s because with, if you're benchmarking Phenom 2s, I suspect you want to be able to unlock the cores. And, I'm, and from my experience with Asus, none of the newer Asus AM3 Plus boards support that feature for compatibility reasons, whereas everybody else does. So I have no idea what's going on with that. But, you know, if you don't want to run a uh, Phenom 2 on this, or more like if you don't want to run a Phenom 2, with two cores in three core mo mode or a four core phenom in five core mode, this board is great. If you want to actually unlock fe cores on phenoms, then yeah, you're probably gonna end up not able to do that. But other than that, this is a great, great motherboard from what I've seen so far. And I can't wait to get to try it on air cooling this Saturday. And then next Saturday, I'll have it on LN2. So on a live stream, so you can go watch that. And that'll be pretty exciting, in my opinion. You know, I'm I'm impressed, honestly. For the price, this is this is really nice. Uh, so, yeah, that's that for this video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Do please consider checking out my Patreon, so you can you know throw me a few dollars, so that I can bring out more content more quickly. Uh, not at higher quality, because I've decided this level of quality is enough quality. And if you don't... And also, uh, in other news, there is AHOC shirts available for the US and the EU. So if you want an actually hardcore overclocking shirt to show everybody how hardcore you are, you can head over to the link down in the description, which is the support AHOC link. That'll take you to the Patreon link and the shirt links. So... That's that for, you know, helping out with AHOC. Thank you for watching and see you next time.